Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for uh, coming to this broadcast. I thank God for the gift of life, for the breath that he renews every morning in your life. I thank you also for his mercies, for the Bible tells us that because of his mercies that we are not consumed. If God's mercy weren't there, based on our daily behavior, daily conduct, we wouldn't deserve to live. We deserve to be condemned and to be punished. But God is infinite love and mercies always look unto us through Jesus Christ as if we never sinned. So tonight we're going to carry on on the fifth lesson of our series of building Christian foundation. Remember we talked about the plan of salvation, the identity in Christ. We talked about the water baptism. And last week we studied about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And tonight we're going to look at leading the unsaved to Christ. Leading the unsaved to Christ. What basically it means that lead somebody to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord or as a Lord and Savior. So when you taking somebody, showing him the ways of the Lord, showing him to know or showing her to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that's what we call leading the unsaved to Christ. But before that, please let's take our Bible and go to the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It's just a, 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 a small verse with a lot of meaning in it. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. But please make sure also you have your Bible, you have your notepad and your pen because these things are crucial for you and I to build a solid Christian foundation. Because these things we need to know. If we want to be kingdom citizens, not transforming the kingdom into a religion, not transforming Jesus Christ, the king of kings, into a president, and not transforming the word of God, as the law of men. It requires knowledge in the things of God. It requires believers to approve themselves. Skillfully dividing the word of God without shame. So please let's read Luke chapter 19 verse 10. It reads, for the Son of Man is a come to seek and to save that which was lost. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Those who are lost are the unsaved. Those who are lost are the ones who don't know their identity. Those who are lost are prone to destruction, prone to hurt. And God doesn't want anyone to be hurt or to be weak or to be harmed. Therefore, he said, come to me, all of you are heavy laden. I will give you rest, but learn of me. So tonight, the purpose of this teaching of the unsaved is to enable believers to, ap to appreciate and value the importance God places on evangelism and the winning of souls. Let me repeat it. The lesson today, which is leading the unsaved to Christ, is to help you and I to appreciate and value the importance of the importance God places on evangelism and winning souls. Remember, I've said to you many times, count your days lost 
if you have not spoken to somebody about God. If you have not taught somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. Count those days lost. So someone has said evangelism is witnessing in the power of the Holy Spirit and living the result not with casting word of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So that's Paul talking to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 saying that when you are witnessing you are witnessing in the power of the Holy Spirit and living the result. But now, Paul is adding that that evangelism should not be with in passing word, the word that uh, attracts, uh, 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 applaud, the word that attracts the, the, the flesh, uh, uh, pride or boast, anything that bring the flesh to feel better. That's the enticement. Attracting people just or charming people. God doesn't want that. And that's why the Apostle Paul is reminding the Corinthians in the first of Peter chapter 2 verse 4 he's saying that the evangelist should not be with enticing word of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of of the spirit and of power. The three C's uh, 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 of the believer main ministry, you have to remember that Christ gave the three responsibility or three tasks. We call the three C's to the body of Christ. The first one is the commission. We call it also the Great Commission in Matthew 28. 18 to 19. Let's look at what Matthew 28, 18 to 19 says. It reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and the law I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. So this is the first commission, which we call the Great Commission. The, the, the second C is about command. Go ye therefore to the entire world and preach the gospel of every creature. God or Christ Jesus, when he instructed us here, he did not, he did not beg us. He said, go, which means is a command. When they tell you go, is a command. We see that also in Mark 16, 15. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world, the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we have, first of all, the commission, the assignment, what we've been commanded, and then the instruction of evangelism or of winning souls require the obedience to the commandment. He said, preach the word, be instant in season and out season. So this is in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, to verse 2 is saying, preach the word in season and out of season. It means that it should be a lifetime commitment, a lifetime lifestyle, a lifetime assignment where you and I, in every second, in every minute, we need to make sure that the person sitting next to us knows Jesus Christ and have accepted Jesus Christ. All you have to do, tell them about the Lord, how good the Lord is, the love of God for the Lord, the love the world that he gave his only begotten son who died for you and me. So whosoever believe will not perish but have an everlasting life. The rest is not your job. 
The rest is the job of the Holy Spirit. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in into play. And the last one is compassion. We must have compassion for souls. And in that compassion, there's an expectation that we must follow God, the Father's example. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever believed will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the compassion we have. For souls. And then the next one is that we must follow Christ's step. The Apostle Peter is saying that Christ should be our example. And what is saying in Luke 9, 19, verse 10, he said, He says that for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Believers must follow God, the Father, as an example. Believers must follow Christ's steps. What are Christ's steps? He came to seek those who are lost and to save them so they do not perish. Those who have been kept caught in the net of Satan, those who have been kept in the name in the, in the nest of the wicked, we must show them the way. For Jesus Christ is the way, the life, and the truth. There's no life outside Christ. And the Apostle Peter said that there's no one who can be saved unless in the name that is above all names. The Lord Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul talked to the Philippians. He says, At the sound of that name, every knee must bow. Now, those knees are saying that the knees that are in heaven, the knees that are in, on earth, and the knees that are under the earth. Even you wondering what's going on under the earth. I don't know. But also under the water. And what's going on under the water, I don't know. But I believe because the word says it. I don't need an evidence, I don't need a proof, but I believe. Now, what are the believer's evangelistic tools? What are the tools you use? Because you remember in everything we do, we must have the appropriate tools. If we don't use the appropriate tools, we're not going to get the best result we're seeking for. When you are witnessing, use the testimony as a tool. If you can't talk about yourself, you can talk about somebody. I have seen a woman declared by the consultant that, Madame, you will never conceive. You only have one fallopian tube. And that tube is completely blocked. It has a shrink. The woman who went away crying and said, why God has done this to me? She came to me and said, that's the report of the doctor. But have you checked the report of the Lord? The Lord said, that shall shine. Whose report shall you believe? Today is a mother of many children. That's the wonders of our God. Man, the handwriting of man says, Thou shalt no longer conceive. The blood of Jesus Christ came and blotted all out, deleted, and she started in the fresh new sheet. That's the wonders of God. That's where men are limited by God is not limited. I remember somebody telling me that, Pastor, if there's anything that is impossible to God, it means that that thing doesn't exist. For nothing on earth and in heaven, under the earth, under the sea, or under the water, nothing is impossible to our God. 
And I believe strongly that because God is the designer, the master maker of the universe and heaven. Nothing impossible to God has not existed. If there is something, it means that thing doesn't exist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second two, what my life was like when I received Christ. So when you are giving your testimony, you've got to tell them what your life was before you gave your life to Christ. The second thing is, how did you receive Christ? And what happened when you have received Christ? These are the testimony you can share. If you can't share your own testimony, use at least somebody else's testimony. Because through the testimony, we overcame the enemy. And the blood of Jesus Christ spoke on our behalf. So that's Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And the second thing you need to use the Bible, the word of God, you go, for example, to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 20, you said, what they saw and they heard, they spoke about it. Oh, hallelujah. What they heard and what they saw, they spoke about it. So you go to the book of Acts, chapter 4, and verse 20. What did it say? Chapter 4, verse 20. It read, For we cannot but to speak the things which we have seen and heard. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So this is Peter and John going out there to tell the world, to tell the world about the, the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ, the signs and wonders the Lord has done while he was with them. Until they ascended and descended. So that we came at the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse chapter 2, verse 16 says, a demonstration of what God said would happen. This is what the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 16. Says, but this is what which was spoken by the prophet, by Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. God spoken in the time past, and it has come. To this day manifested because we see sons and daughters prophesizing, giving the word of God, giving the warning of God, giving the message God has bestowed into them. And we see a young man say that I have a vision, I have a dream, and we see those dreams come to pass. It's because God has spoken, has spoken it in the whole time. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord. So these are the things you use as a believer to testify for Christ Jesus. To evangelize, to win souls. If you can't use your testimonies, use the people's testimonies. Make sure that you also talk about how those people receive Christ. What was their life before Christ? And what happened when they received Christ? And also you talk about what you've heard about Jesus Christ. You inspire yourself from the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 20, and Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. So what is the believer's commitment to evangelism and souls winning? What is their commitment. Remember, to serve Christ, it takes commitment. We have to be committed. Because if we are not committed, there's no result. 
using the power of two of the indwelling of spirit to witness. When you are committed, you are using the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Like in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says it quite clearly, but you shall receive the power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall witness, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We need that indwelling power of the Holy Spirit in us if we are going to go out there and evangelize. And you also got to remember that when we look at the, the book of Isaiah 50, 61 verse 1, the Bible clearly said to us that we have been anointed to speak the word, to preach the word, because it says, it says here in the book of uh, Isaiah 61 from verse 1, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and to open of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for, uh, for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I remember that song we used to to sing all the time. I put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness has come on me. I have put on the garment of praise. So when you feel heavy, you think that the, the spirit of heaviness is controlling you, all you got to do is put the garment of praise. The garment of praise, when you praise the Lord, Heaviness, that spirit of heaviness cannot dwell in you. It will just go out because it can't stand the amount of power and light that you are releasing by praising the Lord. You must use the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit in you to witness. And if you want to know how do you get that power, please refer to the subject we treated last week. That we must receive the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be able to win souls and demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit by witnessing, telling somebody about the word of God. And the last, the last one, the last commitment which is required is that Holy Ghost boldness in wisdom thing to the unchurches or the unsaved. We must be bold to speak to the unsaved, to speak to those who don't go to church. We must tell them of the goodness of the Lord. For example, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jewish first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed unto faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. But I want you to know this. Never be ashamed to talk about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. If you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, a measure of faith, a measure of power is given unto you. So do not be ashamed 
to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation for those that believe. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So, what we understand today, my brothers and sisters, is that when we win souls, we talk to the unchurched, we talk to the unsaved, we talk to those who never heard about Jesus Christ, we must testify of the goodness of the Lord. Our personal experience, we can share that with them, or we can use other people's experience to convey a message, to bring them back because Christ came to seek those who are lost so they can be saved. But as a believer, we must learn also to pray for the unsaved, for the entrance of God's word to bring light into them. We must preach the word of God as in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says, preach the word, be in season or out of season. So when you preach the word of God, that it should not be in a specific time. No. Throughout the year. At night. Data, cold, hot, lukewarm. You and I must preach the word of God. We have to show the love of God to the unsaved. And we must also share with someone what God has done for you or what has done for them that has changed their life. And by doing so, we are winning, we are leading them to Christ. And that's the command, the commission, and the compassion we have to demonstrate. My time is gone. That's it for me now. But before I go, I want to give somebody the opportunity to give them to accept to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But please just say a few words after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the eternal Son of God. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe you are sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for me, for I am a sinner, so I'll be forgiven of all my sins and dwell in the bosom of the Father. Tonight, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It's done. You are born again, spirit field. Find yourself in your locality, in your area, a Bible-based ministry where the word of God is preached without compromising. But if you're not, if you're around Essex and in the land of Basildon, Biloriki, uh, uh, Benfleet, uh, Wickford, we will be happy to see you on our Sunday service at the Northland Park. Join us there 10.30 every Sunday. We are there and we'll enjoy your fellowship. Don't forget, it's not over until God says it's over. And your destiny is in the hand of the Lord. Thank you very much and God bless you and hopefully see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.